Hello and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello of the 176th District in Monroe County. At our last show, we visited the International Gymnastics School, and I promised that I'd be coming back and we were going to do a show at the International Gymna the Camp, the inter Sports Camp, the Training Camp. And uh, absolutely, my guest here today first is Kara, Kara Klaus Major. And Kara, what an absolutely beautiful place here. Let's talk about what you, what you, what the size of the, of the lake and all the, all the information that you can possibly give us. Uh, International Sports Training Camp has been in operation for about 20 years now. It is uh, the brainchild of Bruno Klaus who started International Gymnastics which is very well known in the community. About 20 years ago this property came up for sale and he thought it would be a great idea to start a camp where siblings of gymnasts could come and uh, play a whole different variety of sports. Wow. So for 20 years now, we're going strong and we've really established as our own camp where we do get a lot of siblings from the gymnastics camp, but we get kids really from all over the tri-state area. It's amazing the various activities that go on here. Like I see the, the boating out there, the, the I guess water skiing and all that activity and, and everything else behind. Talk about some of the activities that you have here. Yeah, we have lots of fun at camp. Um, summer camp has changed a lot um, in that, you know, we jet ski and we banana boat and we have a lot of uh, motorized water activities. Uh, we also play sports, uh, soccer, we do traditional things like campfire and s'mores, we have tug of war. So our emphasis really is sports um, and teaching life skills through sports, uh, but it's really just an all-encompassing camp environment. So you're not coming here for TV, you're coming here to work out and uh and enjoy yourself. That's right. We really stress about the importance of unplugging. Mm -hmm. Kids nowadays are so tuned in when it comes to the internet and cell phones and, and everything that's going on that, you know, it's really nice to just get back to the environment, to play sports, to make friends, and really not have an environment where you're dealing with electronic media. It's really refreshing for the kids. Back to basics, and what a great idea. How many kids do you normally, what age groups and how many kids do you normally have here in a year? We start at age 8 and mm -hmm. we go all the way up to 17. Um, and every week here at camp we run one week sessions mm -hmm. and every week we have about 250 kids here in residence. Mm -hmm. now, I, I did notice, um, you know, we had a couple of days of rain so you figure, what do you do at a sports camp during the rain? But then I looked at some of your buildings, like you've got a, an indoor facility over there that uh, can protect right. you from the rain and you can right. do it. Right. We have several indoor facilities. Uh, you know, a lot of times that's a, a big question for parents. Well, what happens when they're at summer camp and it rains? And my answer is we still play. Uh, we have a field house, we have a pavilion, we have a boat house. So even when it's raining, we're still active, we're still out there playing. About how many, um, uh, I, we, we talked about it earlier about the age group. How many, during, this, during the course of a, of a summer, what do you expect to How many kids? We have about 2,000 kids come through this facility throughout every summer. Wow. Yeah, That's so it amazing. keeps us busy. We love it. Uh, like I said, we've got all different age groups. Um, and we have so many kids who really view this place as their second home because they come back every summer. So they get just as excited coming through the gates, and a lot of them say, We're home again. We're home again. Isn't that nice? So it's very nice. It's, it's great to be able to. to to just feel that, that they, they're, they're, they got that type of a feeling when they come in here. Now, I, I walk through your, your room over there, and they're all, you know, not yelling. You know, they're all, these kids are a lot different than what you normally see in, in any other environment. And so you can see that the, what you teach here is absolutely, um, it, it's working. And it's obvious that, to me anyway, that uh, they're having a good time here. Camp is a very structured environment. I know a lot of times people think camp. Um, and we do do a lot of yelling and cheering yeah. and outdoor activities, but it is very structured. Um, a, a lot of times kids really thrive on the structure. Mm -hmm. If you say this is what's to be expected and this is what we're going to do, the kids will buy right into that. Yeah. So they know what's expected of them. They know when it comes to behavior, but we're really all about having fun. And I think in that environment, you know, we just get to see kids gain confidence. Um, they, their self-esteem grows. 
just that little bit of time away from mom and dad to explore the, the you know, to yeah, explore great. the world, gain some independence. Um, and even, you know, we are a week long, even at the end of the week, parents will comment on the changes in their child. Isn't that great? Yeah. So they're here for one week at a time. Yep. So you, you, you drop them off on a Sunday or Monday, what, what's the day? Yep, the uh, parents drop off their kids on Sunday, and then we have a flexibility of a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday pickup, mm -hmm. where it allows for parents, if they're working, they can't make it here on a Friday. It's just a convenience factor for the parents. And then it also enables the kids to stay a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and so if you it, so you can extend beyond the the week, and uh, and this is meals, this is everything, and they stay right here. On and I'm sure this. What's your percentage of staff to um, to to camper? Yeah, we have about 125 staff and 250 wow. campers. So it gives you an idea of the supervision oh is my gosh. Uh, you know extremely strong. Um, we do extensive staff training. So a lot of our staff, they're age 21 and over. A lot of them are going to school to become teachers or, uh, you know, phys ed type of experiences. Great experience for them. So, you know, uh, it's really important that we have mature staff who really enjoy kids. And it's great expense for the staffers. So if they're going to be teachers, you, right. you're going to know if you can handle kids or not. That's right. <laughs> In this environment. That's exactly right. We do have some, um, also we have internship programs with East Stroudsburg University uh -huh. where they come out and um, they really do gain so much. And a lot of them say, uh, you know, I might have finished my college degree, but I really want to go back into working with kids. Um, it's something that I really enjoy doing. So we do, we've had some career changes, mm -hmm. and we've also had a lot of people really resonate and say, yes, this is definitely what I want to do. That's great. There's a little bit of history at, at this location. I know that, um, you know, you, I, look, I walked by here and I was looking at, the, at these uh, stone walls here, and they're fairly thick, and I'm saying, I thought, originally I thought there might have been homes. But uh, let's talk about what this lake originally was. And uh, Yeah. The history of this lake is amazing. Uh, growing up and being local myself, growing up in this community, um, the, the history of Trout Lake is really around the 1890s. It was dammed up and it was used for ice harvesting. Mm -hmm. I know everyone thinks of the Poconos and they think vacation and tourism. But really, back then, people would have thought of the Poconos as somewhere where their ice came from before refrigeration. <laughs> So a lot of the lakes in this area were man-made, were dammed up exactly for that purpose. And they had these amazing ice houses that sat on the properties. And the train would literally come up right next to the lake, um, and the ice would then go to New York and Philadelphia. So we have our lake uh, credited to the ice harvesting industry. And we have these go gorgeous old stone foundations. Unfortunately, many of the ice houses were hit by lightning. Wow. Um, and had burned down, uh, but we at least have the stone foundations. They are massive. They were five stories high. Uh, very impressive structures. This had to be one of the biggest lake uh, ice-producing lakes in the whole area. There's there's a few other lakes up there, but uh, I, this is one of the bigger ones, and uh, I, I, I'd assume there was quite a bit. But when I understand, right in front of us, right, we're probably on the railroad bed right here. We are on the railroad bed. There were two massive ice houses. It went right over to Reader's General Store and then straight off on the wilkes Bear Spur from there. When you look at, at, a, at a property like this and see how beautiful it is, and uh, if I look at it in terms of if the camp wasn't here, I'd have housing. And, you know, right now, especially now, how you've been able to hold, you know, the county keeps talking about open space. You've got open space here, and you're preserving land for future generations by, what, by the way you're using this land. Absolutely. I feel that, especially in Monroe County, I don't know if people realize how many summer camps do exist and the amount of land that summer camps do preserve. On our road alone, Bartonsville Woods Road, there's four summer camps. Wow. And because of that, there's massive tracts of land that are kept free and open and for kids to enjoy. Yeah. Um, you know, that's essentially what our goal is, is, is to be good stewards of our land. And we teach that through camp as well. So it is extremely important to us. One of the things I, I noticed driving in, in the parking lot, throughout the place, how clean it is. Yes. Absolutely, you know, clean. There's nothing, no litter, no, and uh, it's a testament to you and, and, and to the, the, the instructors that you have here the, to, to 
And the kids actually. And right, I was going to say, it's really a testament to the kids, going back to what we were talking about with expectations. And we teach them it's important to pick up after yourselves. It's important to say please and thank you. If you see litter, it's important to pick it up and throw it away. So all of those life lessons, you know, <laughs> we're a sports camp, but I always say that we're so much more that we can, you know, really be making an impact on kids. That's fabulous. You've been watching Legislative Report, and it will return in a moment. October 4th, 1911, the statues that greet visitors in front of the State Capitol building in Harrisburg were dedicated to the citizens of the Commonwealth. In 1902, George Gray Bernard was commissioned to design the figures that embellish the front of the Capitol building. During the installation period, Bernard explained to the General Assembly what each sculpture symbolized. The Southern group titled The Burden of Life depicts the story of Adam and Eve followed by the fall of man in the forms of despair. The Northern group titled, Love and Labor, depicts male and female figures reaping fruits of labor and advances to a new Adam and Eve who gaze westward into the future. Recently, both sculptures underwent restoration to prevent further deterioration from their natural beauty. Now you know. Welcome back to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello, and here I'm at the International Sports Training Camp, and speaking to Kara Klaus, Major, and, and I have to tell you, I've been watching these kids get out there, helmets, vests, they're all, they're, you, you don't take any, you take every precaution that possible. That's right. When it comes to all types of safety equipment, um, to staff training, uh, they all go through CPR uh, training and first aid training. We have a nurse, resident uh, nurse on, uh, we also have athletic trainers. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to any injury, we want to be right on top of it, providing the best care possible. Um, but of course, we do all these preventive measures so that we don't have any Is injuries. That nice? Is uh, so yes, when it comes to safety, uh, we um, spare no expense. We want to make sure that the kids, in order for them to have a good time, they have to be safe. That's a good point. Um, there's a lot of good, new things going on here. Let's talk about some of the, the, the things that you're doing right. here. We're really excited about our green initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, both my husband and I sit on the Keystone Board when it comes to the American Camp Association. Mm -hmm. We are the education chair, chairs. And every year we put on an eco-conference for camp specifically. Wow. So it's something that we're very interested in. Um, and we're very excited about the things that we're doing here at <coughs> camp. Uh, clearly we're doing the recycling and all the, uh, you know, making sure we've got uh, light bulbs and uh, the automatic uh, switch offs, um, low flow toilets, everything like that. But then we're uh, going ahead. We just built a brand new health center. Mm -hmm. We were happy to be able to put geothermal in there. So we have a brand new facility with the stress skin panels, uh, geothermal, which we're so excited about. And then this year, we have uh, implemented solar panels. So on our large field house uh, facility, we now have all solar panels, which we're looking at taking away about 30 to 40% of our electrical costs uh, throughout the year. So we're really excited about uh, going green ourselves because it's going to save us money. Uh, but also we're, that we're able to teach the kids about going green. Uh, that's a great point. I was going to lead into that because these kids see, what are those panels up there? And uh, that's how you save energy. And right. Take advantage of the sun. And, uh, and especially I, with the kids, I think it's becoming more mainstream. Yeah. That, you know, uh, a lot of times the kids are saying, well, you can do this and you can do that because they're getting it in school. They're becoming so much more knowledgeable, educated about it. Um, so they actually love to see those types of things. Yeah. Um, it's, it's the values that they are getting now and that are important to them. So it really ties in. It's amazing how you really, what you're doing is you're moving them forward from seeing it, learning it in school to seeing it here. Right. So you're, you're getting that type of, the, that, that education and, and the, the, that application uh, and, and here we are also having a great time doing it. Sure, sure. The facility to me um, I, I talked about earlier, but I, I, I want to go back to it because there's a point I didn't make. Um, you know, the taxes that this property pays and not, not one dollar of school taxes, you know, uh, of, of impact to the school. 
right. uh, and all of these camps, no impact at all to the school, but yet the school, that if it were not here, that if it were developed, that there were kids living here full time, what type of an effect that it would have on our school districts. And I bring that up because earlier today, I, uh, we had a hearing at Shawnee and um, it was in regard to school funding and the cost of educating a child here and the growth sure. that we've had, the buildings that we've built, and how important it is that camps like this are preserved. Right, and I feel that not only economically, but we also educate children. Yeah. So we're here, we're educating children um, just in a different type of environment, but they're learning so much and not being an economic burden on the school system. Instead, camps, because of all the property, we pay a lot of money towards, towards the schools and property taxes. Additionally, the economic impact of camps, because we have 250 campers, but their families come, they come to the area, they stay overnight, they shop at crossings, they go to Camelback, they go to the water park. So not only are they coming here to camp, but they're also coming here and spending their money, eating at the restaurant. So camps in general, I know a lot of people, that, you know, they're real low on the radar, on the, on the blips, but really, they really help the economy of Monroe County. Yeah, I realize that I, when I'm talking to your brother in the last show, the, the economic impact is just amazing. Yeah. Because exactly right, when you drop off your child, you're going to go and visit the stores. That's right. And not only the jobs that you've created here, but the jobs that have been created in that 611 corridor and the crossings and everywhere else. Exactly. And that's the secondary, um, uh, and it's just tremendous. And, and, and you're right, I don't think people realize, you know, they might see some cars going into the camp, you know, but they don't understand that if that camp wasn't there, right it would be a drain, a, a more of a drain on the school district. Right, right. And when we did, when our family did purchase this land, um, it was basically, it was going to be a development or a summer camp. So that was important mm -hmm. to us. Uh, you know, we believe housing being necessary, but we also believe in preserving nature. So that was an important consideration for us when we originally had purchased this property. Yeah. In the last show, I was we were talking to your, your, your brother in regard to the difference in philosophy between this camp and the international camp, the gymnastics camp. For, for international sports training camp, our real goal is teaching sports, but also teaching life skills through sports. Mm -hmm. For us, if, if you can uh, you know, grasp sportsmanship, teamwork, communication, those are just as important as improving as a player. So they're equal um, when it comes to importance for us. So yes, we are a sports camp, we teach sports, we wanna win, we are competitive, but it's important for us that you're cheering for the camper who it's their first time. They might not be doing great at it, but they're giving it a try. So um, even though we are a competitive sports camp uh, and we want our kids to walk away better athletes, more important to us is that they walk away better people. That's great. You've been watching Legislative Reports. Since we just talked about the International Gymnastics School, we're going to go over to the school, and there's a little museum over there that I'd like you to see, and I'm going to walk around with Bruno Klaus. And we'll be back in a few moments to finish off with Kara here at the International Sports Camp. Hello, I'm State Representative Mario Esquivel. I'm back here at the International Gymnastics School with Mr. Bruno Klaus, the, the owner, the brain behind this whole event, this whole place here. What a beautiful place you have. And I noticed, Mr. Klaus, you have a museum here. And I appreciate it. Tell, tell us about the evolution of all of the gymnastic equipment. Like, you have a ball here. Let's look at this first. This was a medicine ball used in the 1900s. Uh -huh. Early 1900s. And now it's coming back again. Wow. Yeah. And you throw it back and forth there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen that. I've yeah, seen yeah, that. Yeah. And it's coming back. It's coming back. Back yes. to the past. Yep. <laughs> and this was actually from 1900. 1900. Yeah. And how about these other, what do you think? These are in, these are Indian clubs. Mm -hmm. And they used this in competition up to 1950. Mm -hmm. And what they would do is an Olympic event, mm -hmm. and they would swing these things around, hold on to them, and just swing them around. around and wow. yeah, all, all the way around, yeah, it's just feeling. Wow. You have to be very strong in order to do that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And they had to do that for four minutes. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess they have different weights. Different, different classes. They're different classes. That's the different yeah. sizes. Yeah. 
This is something that looks familiar, but it, it but it's uh, you talk about coming back from what today what we have today. We just showed some of the apparatuses a few moments ago. We were in the in, in, in the uh, gymnasium and how the wall table has changed the springboard. Uh, the sp springboard is very. Uh, this is much more spring than what we use today uh -huh. in vaulting. But this was from 1900s, mm -hmm. and that is the vaulting table they vaulted over. And today they have a what they call a vaulting table, very similar to this, where it's coming back again. Something again back. To the, yeah, back to vaulting. Back to the past. Yes. And if you notice the new vaulting table. Very similar to this, a little small, uh -huh. but that's the same idea. Wow. Um, power bars, this is what we used from 1875 to 1950. As a matter of fact, when I was a kid, we competed on these and trained on these bars. Uh, they're not flexible, they're very hard. I remember one time when I uh, was doing a back flip on a power bars, and I uh, decided not to go for it. In other words, I chickened out, mm -hmm. and I came down on top of my head on the steel, on the steel wow. and I knelt for a few minutes. This is the ballast mm -hmm. They used from about 1875 until about 1950, 52, and it was all just a uh, solid piece of wood. And today the beams are very springy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and imagine some uh, girl coming down on this. Oh my gosh! Yes. There's no padding, nothing. On it. Yeah. And it's four inches wide. This is ladder, and they use this from 1900s and up to about 1950. And they would have teams of gymnasts doing uh, acrobatics on here. Mm -hmm. They do planches, they do handstands, and they do all types of designs. And the photo here, it, 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 I assume it's like a, an army barracks or, of some sort, right? Or is it? Great German for oh, it's a festival. It's a festival, but they were festival for soldiers mm -hmm. and gymnasts going to war before they go into the service. Okay. Or had, they go into the service. They actually uh, trained here doing gymnastics to get in shape to, for the Civil War. And this was taken in 18, 1864. Wow. October 18, October 1st, 1864. And these were all gymnasts going into the Civil War. And they have the parallel bars, they have the, uh, the horse, they have the, uh, they, they have it all though. Yep. They have the vaulting bars. Vaulting over they there. They have the buck. Yeah, yeah. Uh, parallel bars, the high bar. And these are things they use to physically get ready to, uh, hmm? for the walk. Right. You mentioned this earlier. We'll talk about that for a second. Uh, the club I belong to in New York uh -huh. uh, started in 1850. Uh -huh. And many of the members, they fought the Civil War. Wow. And uh, it's called American Turners. And Turners, are here again, mm -hmm. is a word for gymnastics. And uh, this was the inlays. This was taken in 1886. These were the soldiers that actually came back from the Civil War. There are many wow. that died in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And they all belonged to the club. Then. And I so they were all in great shape when they were in Well, they, <laughs> they're not in great shape now. No, yeah, when yeah. they were, they were When they were, they had to be, yes. Yeah. Welcome back. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello, and here we are at the International Sports Camp, CARA. There's so many things that are going on here. So let's talk about each individual activity that you have here, and then what happens here when the camp closes down? What's, what, what do we do here the rest of the year? Right. Well, we have in the summertime, we have three programs here at the camp. We have our all sports program where the kids come and all week they play a variety of sports. So the sport never repeats. So in the morning they might play soccer. In the afternoon they could be learning cricket. In the evening, rugby. The next morning they could be on the climbing tower and ropes course. So throughout the week they're getting just a variety of sports experiences. It is by far our most popular program. Wow. We also have a soccer program where the kids come and their, their focus and goal is to improve as soccer players. So they play about six and a half hours of soccer a day. And in addition, they get to have the fun camp activities like any of the waterfront activities, ropes course, etc. But their primary focus is to come out as better soccer players. And then our third program is called IXTC, 
That's for our older campers, ages 15 to 17. And again, they're playing the variety of sports, but they get their jet ski license. They take the jet ski exam. They learn to belay on the ropes course. Wow. They play sports versus the staff. So it's a more extreme program, but also a program for more mature campers. Wow. Now, I have children, and I would like to bring them here. Um, who do I contact? Sure. Um, our office, we're here year-round. Um, and the best thing I can tell everybody is to go on the website because it's full of so much information. And that's international-sports.com. We take registrations year-round, and already some of our sessions are closing out. Wow. So there is an extreme popularity, and there's also a culture of when you pick up your camper, you sign up for next year. So what I'm saying is, is don't wait. Don't wait until school is out to make a decision about your summer. Fabulous. You really should be thinking about it now and getting that information out. We also offer camp tours in the fall and in the spring. So if you'd like to come out and tour the facility, get one-on-one -on -one information from the staff, we highly recommend that. You know, it's a testament to what you do here when you have campers already signing up for the following year yes. as they walk out of here. That's yes. fabulous. Absolutely. And like I said before, a lot of the kids view this as a second home and, and they come certain weeks throughout the summer and it's just part of their summer schedule. What happens when the camp closes down? What do you do in the off season? Right. The camp never really closes oh, down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Pretty much as soon as camp ends, uh, the, the facility changes over and we are called Trout Lake Retreats where we do retreat groups for churches, scout groups, Y groups, um, and we also do uh, clearly sports group. We've had Rutgers University out here. We've got a lot of private soccer schools that come out, and they'll do week-long or weekend retreats with us. In addition, we have a lot of groups that come out, and we'll use Camelback or Shawnee or Jack Frost, where they'll come out for the weekend, have a weekend ski retreat, and it's really nice for youth groups to be able to use a facility like this where we provide the meals, we provide the lodging, and then they can go off and do their activities. So we do stay busy year okay. round. And we've also started, uh, started to get into other functions like weddings because our facility is so beautiful. It really started with people actually calling up and saying, I've seen your lake, do you do weddings? Um, and so more and more, we do quite a few of those a year um, and really enjoy doing them. Mm -hmm. Just talking to you, and I'm looking around, we've seen an eagle flying by, and I'm sure there must be many more. Um, it, it, it's just, it's like back to nature here. It's just unbelievable. Right. The facility is breathtaking, and we do so much to keep up with it. Nature is really important to us. Uh, my husband is a uh, deputy with the Game Commission, huh? so uh, we really have a passion for nature and for animals. Uh, so we really like to tie that in with being stewards of the community and of our property. It has been such a joy, to, uh, the last two shows, one there in, at, at the International Gymnastics School and here at the sports camp, uh, to see properties well maintained like this uh, and seeing the kids occupied and busy because to me that's so important. If you, you don't want them hanging around at home and watching TV or just playing video games. You want them keeping their mind and their body occupied, active. It, it makes such a difference in their lives uh, when, they come, when they make new friends or they have an experience and they do something that they didn't think that they could do, just to watch them smile, watch the confidence grow in them. Um, you know, daily, uh, Mark and I uh, get to look at this and, and really be proud of what we do, of, of what our careers are, that we can be affecting children's lives My positively. God, yes. And in turn, we're also the staff, where we can have such an impression on the staff where they decide that they want a career working with children. So it really gives us a, um, you know, a sense of we're doing something right for the world, we're yeah. helping out, yeah. um, and so it, it really is gratifying. I just want you to know that it does, it, it's really appreciated what you do here for our kids. And it's obvious that you're making great citizens in the future, and you really are. And thank you so much for allowing me to visit with you. Thanks for coming. You've been watching Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. If you have any questions about the program that you've just seen, please contact my office. All the information will be on the screen in a moment. And again, thanks for watching and see you next time on Legislative Report.